Thomas, if you could just come to a circle, please. Having a look at the projection, there's just a couple of things I want you to start looking at, reading, engaging with. You'll see images. Uh, you'll see some text or quotes by Jose Limon. Um, as today, we're just going to we're going into our introductory lesson of our modern unit and into the Limon uh, style or Limon technique. So I just want you to we're going to look at some images. I'm going to ask you some questions. And I'm just going to ask you to just think about as you're looking at the imagery, and you're going to have quite a bit of think time uh, to think about your opinion about the question. And as you watch the video too, there might be some clues in the video for you to help you um, to help inform your your answer. Okay, so be prepared to share that answer with a partner um, in a, in a few minutes. You can name about three or four names in the middle of the last century. The importance of studying and connecting with the pioneers of modern dance helps students understand a context of what we're doing in class, that it's rooted in uh, a legacy, there is a lineage. And for me, in the beginning of the year, it's really important that we develop community in the classroom and that everything we do is about the continuation of a legacy, that they're participants in the, the making of history of dance. Now you've already done some research on Jose Limon and the pioneers of modern dance, yes? So you know a little bit about the history of these people and how modern dance even began. And we I'm know hoping that students will that discover that there is a, an artist that lives that really within them that needs to be drawn out. And as we were looking at the video today on Jose Limon, he was described as an outsider, as a person of color, and that Rather than assimilating, he found a, a way of expressing himself that became renowned and very important, has had long-term impact and effects on the dance world. And this idea of breaking free and developing an individual voice, I think is deeply um, important for youth today, that it is a place of empowerment, and I hope that it would be an inspiration for them to break free, to not be slaves of trends and culture and what is popular, um, absolutely engage with it because it feeds and informs us, but to also try to find their own personal voice, their own personal expression that is gratifying, satisfying, um, empowering. So today we're going to engage in a guided exploration. We're going to do, be doing some thinking, but we're going to be looking at the concepts that are present that you're going to hear me talk about a lot when we actually start learning the technique. So you're going to hear me saying things like swing, suspend, use oppositional pull, fall. And I think before I can even get you to understand those concepts, we need to explore them first. As dance students, I want you to prepare yourself for this very beautiful dance technique, but I want you to honor the form by honoring its creative impulse, that the origin of these forms came from a human creative impulse. Why would we begin with the creative process and not with a series of exercises? It's kind of like what came first, the chicken or the egg question that I'm about to ask you. So I want you to think about, over the next few minutes, what do you think comes first? The technique, which we know is a method of training the body in a particular style, or did choreography come first? So what came first, the training method or the choreography? Uh, in your corners, on your sheet of paper, you'll notice there is a word, a concept, a movement concept. Um, for example, in corner one, it's suspend. In corner two, what is it? Fall in corner three? Swing. Swing, corner four? Oppositional pull. Oppositional pull, that's the tricky one. And there's some images, uh, actually by the Limon company, that help, and now it's difficult to capture movement as a still image. So you have to imagine the before and the after when you look at a still image. So hopefully those images fuel a little bit of your interpretation of what you think that would have looked like um, particularly with suspension, what, what would that look like in motion had it not been captured? And you, you know, teaching is a process, videos, and we right? learn as we go. We learn through observation of how we see students engaging with concept. And I soon realized that we needed to unpack the concept, and they needed to also develop their own language and vocabularies to fully understand this concept, for instance, suspend or oppositional pull. 
That's a troubling concept. What does that mean to a young person when they've never encountered that idea before? And so we refer to the elements of dance because it is, it is the core of movement, of dance expression. And so to do that movement analysis and engaging in the critical thinking process of thinking about what the word means, referring back to prior learning, the elements of dance, and using that as the framework to describe, um, giving prompts in the room for students who may have forgotten the elements of dance, having those visual reminders in the classroom, posting words on the board that they can see, uh, refer to, having students in groups uh, be your, your clarifiers, your teaching assistants, so that students that perhaps are really savvy with words can assist even those kids that might not be, and so they're modeling for each other on how to describe, how to be really explicit about one word, and to think about how that word might influence someone else's creation later on. Wait, would you put like an impulse? Like, you know how it's like, when you swing, you have kind of like Oh, we can have kids. Yeah. Oh, the timing, it can be fast. It can be slow. So fast. On how you swing. No, we're going to yeah. We're trying to think of what, like, words that would, um, like, just another way of saying oppositional pole, so, like... It's totally, like, see. Stiff. 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 Not stiff. Stern. Like, Stern. maybe more. In a way. Like, strong. Okay, yes, what word I'm looking for strong. Stern explosion. A controlled explosion. I was actually looking for the worst strong method. Connecting movement, maybe? Strong. Do you think it's more of a connecting movement? Yeah, yeah it really is. Because we said, like, it leads into other movements. Okay, I think what we'll do is we'll work from the corners of the room. So we'll start with corner three. You can stand up. Maybe someone could uh, hold your piece of paper for you while you speak. Okay, so basically we got swing. And for this is our basically our center idea for swing. So the point in the middle is basically the center of gravity or where the momentum comes from for the swing. And so you can swing up, and as you're coming back down, it gives you more momentum to come back up in a different direction. So that's basically our main idea for swing. And for the body parts, basically, you can swing any part of your body. You can swing your arm, you can swing your head, you can swing whatever part of your body. And for animals, we got monkey. <laughs> Monkeys swing on vines. So they develop a vocabulary physical interpretation. They will have to infer meaning with their bodies. And so the level of thinking that goes into that interpretation, it will be an instantaneous uh, translation from a word uh, into action. And so it'll be really interesting to see how that word becomes really three-dimensional and how it begins to inhabit the body. So now we have, we've done basically some movement analysis of this concept word and really thinking about um, how we use time, space, shape, and energy and we have this time space shape energy chart even in the classroom our banner here um, that's just that visual of knowing that when you're creating and you're going to be creating in a couple of moments we just need to do one more thing first um, and then we're actually going to start physicalizing and interpreting and translating uh, these brainstorms in your body Okay, students, it looks like you have your eight movements, yes? Okay. You're going to be teaching your choreography to a, one person in your group. Yeah, I, I start like... Now, the teaching of movement is really tricky because there is a way of doing your movement, isn't there? And that only you know how to do it. Should I'm trying we to think like of what level is like if you went like over us or something. Yeah. No, so like, it could be like it could be like a triangle because yeah, we're both going one way. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. And yeah. Like, every time I do it, yeah. I'm yeah. yeah. went so yeah. yeah. You are the holder of the technique behind your movement. Yeah. And as choreographers of your movement, you have a vision for what you want it to look like, how you want it perhaps perceived by an audience, what you think it should feel like on the inside. Yeah. So if we like, I think I'm gonna start with one of mine and go to one of your, like, we could, and then flip it as, and then maybe change it around as we go. Yeah. Swing. Yeah. 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 Y
and then do the oh, thing. Cool. And then I guess get up. Come up to the Think about how I teach you technique, how guest artists who've been in our classroom have taught you technique, how to do movement, how to do their choreography. And think about the strategies that they use. How do they teach you? So that you have some ideas about how you're going to teach your partner. The importance of literacy is also the critical thinking that goes into literacy and communication, particularly in this case as students are teaching each other the technique of their movement. And as I was watching students instructing each other, I noticed they would focus on a particular part of the body but not others. They would miss certain things. So there's this analytical skill that's constantly being engaged in terms of I'm they're just focusing on the arms but they totally miss the positions of the feet. So that's where you have to go in as a teacher and say did you notice that but they didn't. And so you get them to start thinking about the layers of instruction, maybe starting with the upper body and then moving into what the feet are doing or start with what the feet are doing and then layer up to what the arms are doing or the head etc. So they have to have language to be able to do that and for some it's, it's still a struggle but hopefully their partner perhaps might be a little bit more fluid and then that provides some modeling about how to describe language. So I think they both benefit. There's the teaching of patience with one another, um, communicating through words, instruction, demonstration. So that's where we get the dance literacy in action where students are demonstrating, talking, describing, and just engaging in that analysis of what they're doing. Okay. So if I can have your attention so we can get started. I know it's very exciting. I can feel the energy. Um, what we're going to do, we'll start with Shamika and Morgan because they're there. Um, and I think what I'd like to do is to put more, uh, sorry, Mark and Daniela in this piece too. So where do you guys begin? Show me your opening. Like, do you guys start fairly close? Uh, yeah. The spot? Now, do you guys uh, move apart from here? Okay, so can I have you guys center it up a little bit and let's put these two in the middle, like in between you guys. So I'll give you a piece of music, have fun dancing together, and have fun playing. Okay, there we go. sure that we got the moves and like you asked questions if we didn't understand and stuff. Yeah, same. You made sure like we repeated it a bunch of times and I like that you asked questions to clarify too. Yeah, and like you didn't like force me to do the move like a certain way. In terms of generating really productive and meaningful conversation and discussion after presentation, there needs to be a lot of work done at the beginning of a year with students in terms of creating community in the classroom, safety, uh, for feedback and constructive criticism and and actually explicitly teaching the language of criticism and providing students with samples of it either through writing and dance reviews or critical essays. So they get lots of opportunities to have those discussions um, whether they're one-on-one -on -one with another student or whether it's in a, a whole class format where they get to do that instant um, feedback of what they're seeing and really teaching those observation skills. I like the way how you keep on repeating things over and over so that we, even yeah. though when we're tired, we still are able to yeah. do it. 
we encourage each other to, to do it again and again. Like, we were exhausted. We still, like, made each other do it. Just so it was perfect. And it was, like, to our standards and stuff. And we didn't put, any, we didn't put each other down. If no. something didn't work, one place would put it in somewhere else. So yeah, we were good at collaborating it together and, like, <laughs> making it one and making it... They have the language of dance through the elements of dance. And with students who get exposed to this language really early on, it should start in the primary grades, and it will with the new curriculum. Um, however, it needs to be constantly practiced to become fluent in how to talk about dance in a way that's uh, meaningful and um, rich. I use exit cards sometimes at the end of lesson as a way of reflection so that students have an ability to do some processing, individual processing of the experience and just going back and thinking about what their learning has been for that day. It gets them to engage more explicitly with, or the metacognitive part of what am I learning, what am I thinking about my learning, what am I thinking about my thinking about my learning, and just having some quiet time to kind of wind down and actually look at the experience um, in a very reflective way. The exit cards also provides me an assessment piece so that when they leave and I look back at them, it gives me feedback on my own teaching and my own practice in terms of what the students connected with. The last question that I asked is what, what do you want to know now? What more do you want to know? So that the learning and the teaching becomes really f fluid and cooperative between myself and the students. The kids, the students get to have lots of choice and they feel empowered by that and then there's ownership in the learning when they have those choices. <laughs>